Here we're in section 2.5. We're looking at taking a data set and representing it with a linear equation, often referred to as a line of best fit. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're comparing data of two variables, which is often referred to as bivariate data. And when you compare that data, you can graph it in a scatter plot to see if there's any type of correlation between the two variables. That correlation could potentially be a linear correlation. It could be quadratic, exponential, logarithmic, etc. We're focusing in this video on a linear correlation. If the data has a linear trend, what we're going to try to do is represent the data with a linear equation, often referred to as a line of best fit. Okay. So in terms of a linear correlation, there are three possibilities for your, your bivariate data. So the first possibility would be you'd have a positive correlation between the two variables of your data set. Um, a scatter plot for that you'd have an upward linear trend to your data points, something like this. And you can see we could represent that with a line as a positive slope to it. Okay. The idea of a positive correlation is that as the value of one of the variables in the data set is increasing, so is the value of the other variable. Okay. Your second option is you could have a negative correlation. So your points could be lining up in a downward linear trend. And that would be represented with a linear equation that has a negative slope to it. Negative correlation uh, implies that as one variable's value is increasing, the other's decreasing. Okay. And then, of course, the third option is. Um, you might have no linear correlation at all. Um, perhaps your points are lining up more in this fashion. I'd say instead of a linear correlation, that has more of a quadratic correlation. And we would try to fit the data to a quadratic equation instead. Okay. All right. So uh, normally, let's move to an example here. Normally, if we were in the classroom, I would um, have us complete this together to collect some data, but uh, for the video purpose, I'm taking data from um, a, a class that I've already done this for, okay? So notice we're, we're looking at how long it takes a group of students to do the wave. So what I did here in a previous class is I went around the room and I had a certain number of students complete the wave like you do at a baseball game, and I timed it. And here you see the data for it. We had a total of 20 students completing it when it was all said and done, okay? So what we'd like to do with this data is make a scatter plot, draw a line of best fit if a linear model seems reasonable for the data, and then describe the type of linear correlation if it exists between the two variables, okay? So you can see I already have my, um, my uh, coordinate plane labeled here. And let's go ahead and plot everything. So first point is 4, 1.96, where 4 represents the number of students. 1.96 represents the time it took for those four students to do the wave. All right. Um, if we plot that right around there. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That's 0.96. Right here's 1.96. All right. Next, going up to right about here. It's 8, 4.58. Then we have 12, 5.13. 16, 5.48. And then 25.76. All right, so you can see that that initial point of 4, 1.96, it, um, it's kind of a, I guess I'd call it an outlier to this data set. But the other four points seem to have a pretty good linear trend to them. So I would say a linear model is reasonable here. And 
we're just going to kind of eyeball our line of best fit. Um, probably something in this range. Okay. Um, in terms of describing the correlation, we're going to say that um, as the number of students increases, the length of time to complete the wave increases. which would be known since both variables are increasing, that would be a positive correlation. Okay. All right, so moving forward, now what we want to do is we want to come up with a prediction equation for this data set, meaning uh, find a linear equation to represent it. And once we have it, um, we'll want to kind of make sense of it. What do the slope and the y-intercept of the equation indicate, okay? So what we'll do is we're going to pick two points from the data set, okay? Pick two points. Let's go back here and look at our data set. The one point that I would avoid using is that first point of 4, 1.96, because like I said, it's kind of like an outlier here. So I am going to pick... Um, this point of 8, 4.58, and then I'll also do 16, 5.48, okay? So let's put that on here using 8, 4.58, and 16, 5.48, all right? So... Imagine we're trying to come up with an equation of a line that passes through these two points. First thing we'll need to do is find the slope of the line. So I subtract one y-coordinate from the other. Same with the x-coordinates. That's going to give me 0.9 divided by 8, which is equivalent to 0. 1, 1, 2, 5 for my slope, okay? Then I'm going to take that slope and I'm going to take one of my two points, put them into point slope form to make my equation. So I'm going to use the first point, 8, 4.58 to do that. Y minus 4.58 is equal to my slope of 0.1125 multiplied by the quantity of x minus 8. And then we're going to put this into slope intercept form. So I'll distribute my slope. Give me 0 0.1125x minus 0 0.9. I'll add my 4.5 over. And there is our equation to represent the data set in slope intercept form. Okay. Now let's uh, interpret the slope and the y-intercept here of this equation. So our slope is this 0 0.1125. Um, when I'm interpreting the slope and it's in a decimal form like this, I like to think of the decimal as, as being over one. So I, I wanna think of slope in terms of that idea of uh, comparison between a Y value and an X value. So in this situation, your Y values are um, representing time and your X values represent the number of students, right? So 0 0.1125, is referring to time in seconds. One is referring to student, okay? So I'll interpret the slope as meaning it takes 
0 0.1125 seconds for one student to complete the wave. Okay. Now in terms of the y-intercept here, our y-intercept is this uh, 3.68. And if you think a y-intercept is referring to when x is zero. So in this case, um, X being zero doesn't really apply because you can't have a zero, a zero number of students doing the wave here. All right. But in other scenarios, um, having zero of the particular X value might be necessary. Basically, you'd be saying it takes zero um, students 3.68 seconds to do the wave. It just doesn't apply in this situation. OK. All right. Now, one other thing to. Um, really make mention of is if we were to have chosen two different points from our data set, our equation would most likely be different. Okay, probably similar. Um, the closer the points from the data set are to a true linear um, relationship, the um, closer your equations are going to be to one another. Okay. So the question is, if I'm getting different equations using two different points, what line is the best fit line? Well, that's where some statistics will come into play. And um, uh, we're going to look at that a little bit in another video on how we can get technology to utilize a better statistical approach to coming up with a line of best fit. So for now, the ones that we're doing by hand they're not quite as accurate as that they could be, okay? All right, now let's move forward. And now that we have this prediction equation, let's use it to predict some values that weren't um, from the actual data set itself. They weren't directly in the data set, okay? So whenever you're using your equation to predict values that aren't directly within your data set, you're doing a process called interpolation or extrapolation. Interpolation is a, is a term used to predict a value that's inside the domain and range of your provided data set. Extrapolation would be predicting a value that is outside the domain and the range of your provided data set. Okay, so let's say we want to use the equation we just came up with to predict how long it will take 100 students to do the wave. Okay, 100 students to do the wave. Um, is this an example of extrapolation or interpolation? Well, if you go back and you look at our data set here, the number of students that were um, in our data set ranged from four students up to 20 students. We are now trying to predict 100 students, which falls outside of the original um, domain in this data set. So this would be an example of extrapolation, okay? If I was trying to make a prediction for any number of students between four and 20, then that would be considered interpolation, okay? All right, now let's actually do this. We're gonna take our equation and we're gonna insert 104x and then we'll simplify. So this would be 11.25 plus 3.68, which is 14.93, meaning 14.93 seconds for 100 students to do the wave. Okay. All right, that's it for this video.